Hey guys, welcome back to Freckle Face Finance, where we discuss personal finances open and honestly so that you can live the life that you deserve. Really quickly, I wanted to share with you guys how I recently saved a ton of money and how you can too. So if you own a home and you would like to find out how you can save hundreds of dollars on your mortgage every month, then keep on watching. So this video is going to be for people who own a home who currently have PMI on their mortgage and specifically people who do not have FHA because this strategy won't really work for people who have an FHA loan, but I can give you a tip on how you can make this beneficial if that's the type of loan you have at the end of this video. So for those who don't know, PMI is private mortgage insurance and that is for people who typically put down less than 20% on their home. And so in my case, I have a conventional loan and I put down 5%. And so because it was less than 20%, I had to pay private mortgage insurance. For the most part, I would say that this applies to the majority of people. Um, if you have FHA, you typically will put down between 1% and 3%. And then people who have conventional will typically put down anywhere between 5 to 15%. So the reason why you want to get PMI off of your mortgage is because typically it's going to be hundreds of dollars a month. And so it's not going towards your principal balance. It's just really just going to the bank just for financing the loan. So in most cases, you typically want to get the PMI off so that you can use that money either towards your actual principal or towards investing. So if you have a conventional loan and you have PMI on your mortgage, luckily for you, you can remove it if you meet one of these three circumstances. So one of the ways that you can get your PMI removed from your mortgage is to do absolutely nothing. And then once your loan to value ratio equals 78 to 80%, your lender should contact you and should automatically remove the PMI from your account. Now, this could take years. <laughs> Unfortunately, this could take years and I can give you some better options on how you can get the PMI removed faster than this. So this is not my recommended option, but this is an option if you are more hands off they will automatically remove it once your loan to value ratio is 80%. And so what that means in layman terms is that you have paid off 20% of your home. So in this case, if you purchase a home for $100,000 and you put down a down payment of 5%, which is $5,000, once your loan to value ratio is $20,000, which means you have paid an additional $15,000, you now have $20,000 worth of equity in your home, which is 20% of their original loan, and so your PMI will automatically fall off. Now, in most cases, this could take years. This all depends on the market. This is not my recommended path. This is more for people who are hands off. But just to let you know, if you do absolutely nothing, you will eventually get the PMI off of your mortgage. Now, the second way that you can get PMI removed from your mortgage is that you have done some type of home renovation that has increased the value of your home. Now, this can happen fairly quickly, typically sooner than it would take for you to naturally pay down 20% of your loan. And so this will be for people who have typically purchased an older home or they have purchased a home with the thought in mind that they're going to do some type of renovation. So this could be a kitchen renovation. This could be finishing a basement, um, any type of home repair that is going to increase the value of your home. And so if you decide to take this route, you will need to document the specific home renovations that you made, how much they cost. And so typically the lender is going to send someone out to do an appraisal on your home. They're going to look to make sure that you actually have completed those renovations and they're going to see what your home is currently valued at. So in order to put this in number terms for you guys, if you purchase a home for $100,000 and you put down 5% as your down payment and you have made some type of renovation to your home that has increased the value to at least $115,000, with your $5,000 payment, you now have $20,000 worth of equity in your home. And so in that case, you will be able to remove the PMI from your mortgage. So I think that this is a great way to remove the PMI from your home. This will typically occur a lot faster than it would be to just naturally pay down 20% of your mortgage. And so this is a great option for those who have the patience to do home renovations, manage contractors, and just keep up with all of your seats. I think that this is a great option as well. So option three, which is what I actually use to remove the PMI from my mortgage, which I think would apply to a lot of people who've purchased homes in the last five years, is that the value of my home just naturally increased enough for me to be able to remove the PMI. So with me naturally paying down my mortgage with my monthly payments and the area that I live in, my home just increased in value so much that I was able to meet that balance of the loan to value ratio. And so I was naturally able to remove the PMI from my account. And so this is different from option number one because option number one, you had to pay down 20% of your loan. 
Whereas with option number three, you don't necessarily pay down 20% of your loan. You can pay down 10% of your loan and then your house value just increases by 10%, which will also equate to the number that you need in order to remove the PMI. So now that I've talked about what PMI is, as well as the different options to have PMI removed, I'm going to walk you guys through exactly what I did in order to remove the PMI from my account. So each lender is going to be different. You're going to have to contact your lender in order to see what their requirements are. But for my specific case, I had to submit a written request in order to remove my PMI. And so with that written request, I had to select one of these three options in which would qualify me for getting my PMI removed. I selected option three. And so in order for the lender to validate that my home had increased in value, they did assign a third party home appraiser to come out to my home. They walked through the entire home. They took pictures because not only are they coming to validate that my home has increased in value in regards to the comps of the area. So they're also coming to validate that I haven't done any damages to my home from purchase. So the appraiser came in, he took a lot of pictures and he put together this package of what the homes in my area are typically selling for and where my home ranks compared to those other homes. So it's called a comp, a home comp. And so he did that as well as my pictures and he submitted that to my lender. And in case you're wondering, I actually had to pay for the home appraiser out of pocket. So in order for me to get the PMI removed, I did have to put up some money up front, which was about $300 to have the appraiser come out to my home take the pictures, do the walkthrough, and provide the comps package to my lender. So the $300 was definitely worth it because in the end, I was able to get my PMI removed. Now the whole process took about 30 days. And in that time from when I initiated the process to the time that it closed, I did have another mortgage payment due in which I paid the PMI. And so my lender refunded that PMI payment to me once my package was approved to have the PMI removed. Now, really quickly, I want to talk to you guys about why it is important to put forth the legwork to remove the PMI sooner than it would take in order for it to naturally fall off. So let me go ahead and grab my computer so I can show you guys some real numbers. So really quickly, I wanted to show you guys why it is so important to take the extra effort to get the PMI removed from your account. So I grabbed my computer and I have this rough mortgage calculator pulled up. And so, for example, let's say if I paid one extra dollar towards my mortgage every month then I would save $130 in interest and I would pay my mortgage off no faster than I currently am gonna have it paid off, which the estimated paid off date is April 2050, right? So my PMI was $200. So let's say I spent the $200 instead of paying it towards my PMI, I paid it directly towards the principal of my loan. And so if I did that, I would save $21,282 over the course of my loan, which is a lot of money, right? And so if I did this, I would be able to pay my mortgage off four years and two months faster than I would if I did not put that money towards my principal. Now, I'm sure you guys are watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, that is saving you so much money. You're paying off your mortgage faster. You definitely see a benefit into doing this, right? Well, let me show you what would happen if you took that same $200 and invested it over the same amount of time. So let's just keep this in mind. I will have my mortgage paid off by 2046, which is 22 years from now. Now, let me show you what would happen if you take that same $200 and instead of putting it towards your mortgage every month, you invested it. So if we have an initial investment of $0 and we contributed monthly $200 over 22 years, right? Which was the same period of time that it would take us to pay off our mortgage. Uh, estimated interest rate, 8% and we're going to say annually now we were able to save over twenty-one thousand dollars, which is a lot of money let's see what would happen if we invested it so if we invested that same two hundred dollars over the same amount of time in 22 years we would have one hundred and thirty three thousand dollars <laughs> so that is literally over a hundred thousand dollar difference just by investing it as opposed to putting it towards our mortgage so as you can see, not only is it a no brainer to put forth the extra work to get your PMI off as soon as possible. Yes, you have the option of putting that money towards your mortgage and paying off your loan early, or the numbers speak for themselves that it would actually be a better investment to invest that money in some type of mutual fund ETF, as opposed to putting it towards your mortgage and paying it off early. 
As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoy making these types of videos and just sharing with you guys as I progress and I hit different milestones in my life, just different things that I'm learning and just loving to share that knowledge with you guys along the way. Also, if you really, really enjoyed this content, please consider contributing to my Buy Me A Coffee, which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video even a little bit, please make sure to give me a thumbs up so it can be pushed to a larger audience and I'll see y'all in my next one. All right. Thanks. Bye.